Hi folks, so uh, what we have here today is a pair of Smith & Wesson uh, Model 94 high security handcuffs. Uh, these were, uh, the first version of these were introduced about 1969. Uh, this is the second version, uh, which was introduced about 1975 or so. Um, now, they are, for the most part, uh, not that different from other Smith & Wesson handcuffs of the period, uh, but the big obvious difference is that key and the lack of any uh, secondary uh, double locking mechanism. And the way this works is a, uh, it uses a proprietary uh, four-pin tubular core. It's a uh, different diameter than pretty much everything else uh, on the market and instead of having a, an indexing notch that a uh, protrusion on the key fits into uh, the key has a notch right there uh, that fits over this blade that hopefully you can make out just there and that's what indexes the key and then uh, the pins have two different possible depths uh, basically all the way down uh, flush with the rear of the keyway and uh, slightly raised. So there you can see uh, the key. Come on, focus. Focus for me. There we go, sort of, almost. Uh, but there you can see the cuts on there. This is not an original key, this is a uh, reproduction. Uh, you can find them occasionally on eBay, uh, but these have been out of uh, production since at least uh, the early 90s, if not the early 1980s, uh, when Smith & Wesson refreshed their uh, selection of handcuffs and uh, introduced the Model 100 and its uh, variants and successors and so on. Uh, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to... Uh, well, first, uh, basic operations. So, if you see the indexing blade and the little mark on the outside of the cylinder, uh, when it points towards the side of the handcuff, that means the handcuff is single lock. So I can push it through and close it back up. If I want to open the handcuff and release whoever's locked up in there, I insert the key and I turn towards uh, the ratchet arm, and then it uh, withdraws the pole. And here, actually, you can see uh, that it uses three individual poles, which is kind of odd considering the way that this uh, lock mechanism works, because there's really no way to actually directly pick those uh, uh, poles, although it does make shimming them a little bit uh, more difficult. Anyway, uh, and then it automatically springs back to the single lock position, and then if we turn it so that the indexing blade and that uh, marker are facing towards the swivel, uh, the handcuff is now double locked. And now we're going to see if we can get out of these. Uh, so what I have here is the uh, pocket clip off of a uh, Stadler Mars uh, technical drafting pencil. One of these guys. You can just slide that off the end and uh, they make an almost perfect uh, tension tool for these. Sometimes you do have to widen it out a little bit so that you have that opening in the end. And of course you want to fold out uh, the clip part so that it's a little bit flatter. Uh, but we're just going to slide that in there, put that gap over the uh, indexing notch, just wiggle it in until it's seated, and then, not quite seated, now it's seated. There we go. Uh, so there you go. Looks something like that. Oh, come on, camera. Don't do this now. Uh, anyway. Right, so the camera's uh, being in cooperative tonight, which is nothing new. And right now, uh, 
for our pick, we're going to use the uh, Peterson knife tool. Um, you can use any thin bit of uh, wire or metal that can uh, fit between the uh, central core of the uh, tubular lock and this tensioning tool. And we're just going to go around and feel those pins one by one. And remember we want to turn this uh, clockwise, so okay, we've got a little bit of a click out of what I'm going to arbitrarily call pin number one. doesn't really want to give us anything. Okay, um, on to pin number three. It's a bit soft. Pin number four. Oh, and there we go. So we've got it to a single lock position, which is good because now we can attempt to shim it uh, if we have a shim handy. Uh, but let's just see if we can actually pick it all the way to the open position. So uh, just going with the uh, binding order that we had before in the hopes that it will be the same or similar. Gonna click there. Click there. Click there. And... Oh, this is very stiff. And there we go. Hold it open and unlock. So, this is actually basically the, the thing that uh, got uh, Smith & Wesson to stop offering these for sale and to uh, drop this uh, tubular lock design from their future high security handcuffs. When these were introduced in uh, the late 60s and 1970s, they were uh, considered very high security, like a lot of other tubular locks were at the time. But uh, by the late 70s, 1980s, people were discovering that, uh, you know, it wasn't entirely possible to pick these using parts from pens and so on, uh, much like uh, the kryptonite bicycle locks in about 2005 or so. Anyway, uh, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this, and have fun, and happy picking.